Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So in front of you uh, today you can see uh, one of the pens in my collection and this is an Andy Lambrou pen and um, now uh, it was formerly Lambrou pens, it's now classic pens um, and uh, they are based uh, out of the US and uh, I just want to sort of show you the the pen um, this pen actually um, has a nice backstory for me uh, I purchased this from Sarge the um, uh, one man pen show at the October London UK pen show uh, in 2017 and uh, I took a, a fairly sizable budget with me to the show. Um, I was hoping for um, some Visconti, some maybe some classic pens, uh, some some um, uh, Sailor King of pens, uh, most likely. And um, I was looking around the entire show, and I really couldn't find any pens that really spoke to me. Uh, there weren't a lot of Viscontis there, which was a shame. Or The ones that were there uh, I already had in my collection, so I didn't really want any uh, any duplicate Viscontis. Uh, they had, uh, there were a lot of um, lovely Pelicans there, um, tons of vintage pens, and um, uh, there were Parkers there as well, some modern Parkers. Um, there, there was uh, Conid there as well, although you couldn't actually buy the pen and walk away with it there and then. Um, but uh, there were uh, lots and lots and lots of pens there. But um, uh, unfortunately, I, there really wasn't a lot that I could find. And I went in with what was a reduced budget, but a sizable budget. And uh, I, in the end, ended up at Sarge's table, Sarge, the one-man pen show. And lo and behold, he had... Uh, a Classic Pens LM1 and two Classic Pens LB5s and I in the end I pulled the trigger on the LM1 and LB5 um, one guy uh, was picking uh, the uh, LM1 and the LB5 up and admiring it like I was I really thought he was going to buy the pen uh, now I know it's uh, Gary um, uh, Dapperman from, from the uh, London UK Pen Club uh, but I didn't know him uh, at that moment in time and I was just sort of seriously thinking well he's going to steal this pen for me so um, uh, I'm glad I managed to secure both pens uh, and today I'm really going to show you the the um, LM1. Now this is, uh, as I said, a Lambrou pen. This was really before they renamed themselves uh, to Classic Pens. Uh, if I open up this uh, lovely, lovely red box, as you can see here, very glossy, um, you see the pen in there. And that is the LM1 Flame Red. So let me just take this out and just show you the stunning, stunning material of this pen. Now before I go any further, I'll just show you a few other things that you actually get in the box as well, or in the cardboard box, because it won't physically fit in this box. Um, so uh, um, Classic Pens give you uh, this very small sort of brochure certificate uh, with authenticity, saying congratulations on your new legend pen. At Classic Pens, we take pride in the art and craftsmanship we build into our products, and our commitment is endorsed by this warranty and certificate of authenticity. Heirlooms to feed your soul. They definitely feed your soul, I will tell you that for sure. Uh, there is a lifetime warranty. Um, to be free from defects in materials and workmanship for the life of this pen to the original purchaser as validated by a copy of the purchaser's original sales receipt. Now, I bought this uh, from Sarge, so I did not buy this direct from Classic Pens, so uh, I would hazard a guess I probably don't have a lifetime warranty on this, but... Um, it, at the moment, like I'm not having any problems with this pen whatsoever. Um, and then the uh, this certifies that this is an authentic Legend TM fountain pen or roller ball, and it is manufactured of classic pens, exacting specifications in the materials and workmanship. Each fountain pen is fitted with an 18 carat solid gold nib 
fine, medium, broad or broad italic and features a cartridge converter filling system, converter included. So, that is the booklet as I showed you there and then this is the certificate so of authenticity uh, with the LE number. So I got um, the limited edition number of 006 of 500 worldwide. So um, and then just on the back here, again, it just tells you the pen there. So it's an LM1 Flame Red limited edition. So 500 uh, is is a isn't a small or isn't a large number as well of limited edition. Um, a lot of Viscontis will have 888 or 1,000, some have 500. Uh, th there are pens that, that go down into like like 10, uh, like uh, some of the Conway Stewart's, the more recent ones are limited edition of like 10 or 12. So um, uh, does that really mean a lot? Well, it just means there's less out there. A lot of time it won't bump the price up, sometimes it will. It really depends on the pen and likewise um, the the um the manufacturer of the pen uh, and the the total cost of the pen and how rare that pen is <clears throat> so here is the pen again uh and as you can see here if i zoom in a little bit you'll see more this lovely lovely flame red um you have the clip here and you have the clip ring on the cap uh, and this is a diffusion bonded acrylic um, and basically they just um, fuse together layers and layers of acrylic and it creates this really stunning effect now you can also see here uh, you actually have the on the cap band you have classic LM1 flame red and then six of 500 and the classic pens logo there um, on the body itself again you can see how this material really really is accentuated it's it's such a stunning stunning material uh, this material has been on a number of classic pens uh, they at least have had it on the LM1 the LB5 the LB6s and uh, I believe soon uh, there will be new models coming out with, with uh, probably utilising this same material. Um, and then towards the end you actually have the uh, end cap ring here and then the end cap. Although because it's not a piston filler this is not operational. So that's, that's the pen itself. If I uncap the pen you'll see here in terms of size it's actually quite a largish uh, pen. It's not a small pen. Uh, the section for me is very, very comfortable, even though it might be on the little smaller side compared to some sections. Um, there is a, um, uh, you'll see here, the the threads. Uh, there's not that many threads. Um, uh, and there's a small step down. The threads you can feel, they're not sharp at all. Uh, and then you have uh, this lovely 18 carat bock nib and uh, this is a, a lovely nib now I will show you our unscrew and here is the cartridge converter it's just a, a standard uh, cartridge converter I don't think it's branded at all um, but uh, maybe a Schmidt converter possibly um, but uh, so this will hold 0 0.7 millilitres of ink uh, but it is a really really nice writer um, you can't eyedropper it because it has metal threads um, you can if you want to you can try and post the pen it's not that secure like it will like it will post but it, it can wobble a little bit so to be honest I this is not a pen that I would post I don't normally post pens at all like it will just about fit on there but it's not it doesn't feel secure um, so 
that's really the pen. It's such a stunning, stunning material, and I absolutely love this. The flame red is really. Uh, uh, when I went to the pen show, I really, m my goal was, um, if I could get a king of pen, great uh, at the show. If I could get an LM1 or an LB5, even better. The ultimate would have been an LB5 in this flame red, and sadly, uh, Sarge had already just sold one, um, and, and it was reserved. But. Um, this the uh, I I got in the end an LB5 in a different color, uh, the Kawasaki, and and then this LM1 in the flame red, and I absolutely love this color. So let's uh, do some size measurements and um, and then a writing sample, shall we? So in terms of uh, the full pen. Let's try and rotate this a bit. The full pen is around 150 millimeters long. Actually, the cap itself is 70 millimeters. And then the pen, let's see if I can try and stop this rolling because it's going to want to roll, most likely. From the tip of the nib, you're looking around about 133, maybe 134 millimeters long. So that is a probably in the oversized category. Like um, the uh, that's around about the same size as a as a Visconti Homo sapiens. So let's uh, do a weight check on this. So the entire pen. We are looking at just under 35 grams. The cap itself, about 13 and a half grams. And then the pen itself, just under 20 grams. And that's fully inked. So it's not a heavy pen by any stretch. Uh, 20 grams is actually fairly good, fairly average, I would say, for a um, a, a good weight pen. So um, that's uh, it, it's it's a lovely, lovely, stunning material. Um, I'll just bring that back in, and you can see here, it's just absolutely stunning. So let's, uh, what I'll do here, I'll do a comparison size against other pens. So on the left here, we have a Pelican M600 turquoise white. We have a Pelican M800 royal gold Raden. Right, let's start this again, Dave. So on the left here, we have a Pelican M600 turquoise white. We have a Pelican M800 royal gold Raden. We have a Pelican M1000, a Twisby Diamond 580AL, the Armando Simone Club Bologna Extra Arco. That's a bit of a mouthful. We have the Classic Pens LM1, formerly Lambrew Pens. We have a Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age Lava. And as you can see, the two here are pretty much the same size. We have a Lamy uh, Lux, which is effectively an all-star with a gold trim and a slightly different nib. Um, we have an Edison Collier, and we have an Edison Perlet. Now, the Perlet is, is a very small pen, uh, but you can see here, it is uh, it is in the oversized category. It's slightly longer than an M1000. Um, but uh, it's, uh, it is a really nice size pen for me and a really nice weight. So let's do a writing sample. This is the classic pens LM1. flame red in a medium and the ink that I have inked up at the moment is Blackstone 
uh, Yulu red. Now you can see here in terms of line variation this is just the standard line variation that the pen gives. Now if I start to apply a little bit more pressure you can get a little bit of line variation out of it but I'm not going to try and push this nib too much. It's not a semi-flex nib or even a flex nib at all, um, modern flex nib. It's 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 a slightly bouncy nib um, and you can see here it's you will and can get some line variation out of it. So see here So there's a fair bit of line variation there. It's not massive, um, but but there is some there. Um, it is a very wet pen uh, as well. Um, I can still see the ink here that is actually still, if you can see this on camera, but it's actually still glistening. So let's just do a um, couple of uh, ink wetness tests, shall we? So it's not a overly like fire hose wet nib, but it's still quite wet. So that to me is is a is quite a wet pen, um, and that's it really. It's it's a really really nice pen. I am so glad I was able to add this to my collection. Um, I have lusted over the LM1 and the LB5 for some time now and I really really wanted to uh, ideally add an LB5 in flame red um, but uh, if I couldn't the LM1 and uh, I'm glad I managed to get the LM1 and also a separate LB5 uh, ideally it would have been nice just to have one but uh, I don't know like it's nice to have two as well I guess so um so that's it really, um, that's it for this video, thanks for watching, please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you on the next pen video, bye bye.